Welcome class. Now we are on 2.5. We are actually almost done with the chapter 2 as well. So I talked all that previous one, right? Because if you understand that one, next two sections will be easier. So please pay attention to the explanations. And now I'm gonna repeat again of the our um, appetizers. <laughs> I said as a dessert, right? I was going to give this one as a dessert. So let me change to appetizer. Then let's graph this one first. So let me graph the here quickly. 2 to the x is passing through. My function is going to be negative 1 if I plug in 1 over 2. 1, 2, 4, 8. So graph carefully. 1, 2, 4, 8. Doubles right each time. And this is my graph. Then I want you to graph 2 to the x. You can do it together with me. That's a 2 to the x graph. And I plug in those values. It gives me. And I'm rushing, right? Next one is a log. And then log, let's plug in. What's a log? Negative 1. I put it there so that you realize undefined. What's a log 0? Undefined. And then what's a log 1? Zero, you guys remember what's log base two over two? One. What's log base two over three? I don't know. We have to put punch into the calculator. We have to punch into the calculator. But I know that log four is log four is two, right? So I know this number. So let's graph this one. I only have one zero two one and four two. And then there will be log base 2 over 3, right? So earlier also we talked about the graph of where everywhere is increasing. This time we weren't, I want to show you numerically one time what happened each case. So I want you to see rate of change between those two numbers which our x value increased by 1. So it's easy to subtract. One dollar subtract fifty cents. It will give me between here. It's going to be one over two. How about between here one? Between here two? Between here four? So do you see that my derivative function is increasing? That means I'm accelerating. My speed is going faster and faster by time. My speed is going faster and faster by the time. That means, also, I'm going to go one more. I'm going to find the differences. That's 1 over 2. That's 1. That's 2. We call it a second derivative. That means acceleration. What does that mean? When you are driving, you put your foot on the pedal, and then you want to go faster, 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 because you want to reach to everybody's speed about... 70 or 80 whatever you want to drive so you keep pressing more and more and more that's what it means so that's the graph of the increasing with the acceleration positive this is acceleration positive and then your slope is also positive of course everything will be positive because slope is positive here increasing now let's look at next example now I want to find the differences here so each time it's going to be two differences, two differences, and two differences, two differences. So I see that my speed is actually all the same. What does that mean? Am I increasing, decreasing, or am I on cruise control? I am on cruise control. Am I still going forward? Yes. But my speed is steady the whole time. I just set the cruise control so that it doesn't go fast or slower. Then, now let's check our acceleration. What does that mean? The difference is zero. Whoa! That means I just put my foot on and then hanging out. I didn't press, I didn't release. I'm just hanging there. Then next one, 
almost there. I want to find the differences between this one, that's one, and then this one, probably I need to punch in. So let me punch into calculator to see. So log 3 divided by log 2, right? Then I get 1.5849, so I'm going to subtract from 1, gives me, I get 0.5849. Okay, now I know that subtracting that one from 2 gives me, I have a difference between here, point four one five zero oh my number is it correct so from here i got that number and then i'm subtracting two minus this one then i get 1.4 one two three two minus log three divided by log two yeah, I was right. So that's what I get. So that's my speed. So what happening to my speed here? It's so 1, 2, 0.58, 0.41. So you see that it's decreasing. And as you see, the gap here is about 0.4. And this gap is about less than even 0.17, right? So I want you to see that what's happening. My acceleration is actually decreasing. My second derivative is decreasing. Oh, what does that mean? Am I going forward? Yes. My speed is uh, good. Yeah. But what's happening? Each time you saw the stop sign that you are slowing down. You are slowing down that your acceleration is negative because you're decelerating. Okay. So one more time I will throw meaning. Now let's graph it. You thought that's done, right? I thought so too. So let's graph it. If I graph the my derivative function, and this is going to be now negative uh, one over two, my derivative function right here, two, one, two, four. Oh, do you see that actually your derivative function is the same? Almost look like look like the same, right? Look like the same and then now second derivative function is going to be almost look like the same too wow that's pretty crazy right and next one yeah if you graph this one still it's gonna increase it's gonna increase but your value is going to be a little bit off here from where x is next one if i graph this one is going to be two so it's going to be this graph then if I take the second derivative graph, that's going to be right here. I'll put it as dotted. This is the first derivative. This is the second derivative. This is original. Make sense to you? Cruise control, speed is steady, acceleration is zero. Okay, last one here, an original function. And then if you graph the next one, I get 1.58. And then four one, so it's going to be speed is like this. This is still going forward. My speed is uh, actually positive, but now it's going to be you. It's above the x-axis, but now the slope of the first derivative represents acceleration, which is a negative. Mm -hmm. Lots of meaning here, so I want to relate that, and then. Let's do another appetizer. Okay, so now we are on appetizer two. This one will be a little bit simple. So let's go over, but it will be a whole summary of chapter two. So I have x squared as a function. Do you guys want to do rate of change one more time with me? So a plus h squared minus a squared over h. If I expand the a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus a squared over h, it will be 
2a plus h, I already cancelled those h's, and then taking limit as h goes to infinity, uh, it goes to 0, right? Then that gives me 2a as my rate of change with limit, which is the bit, which is the same as 2x, right? I just use the a in here. Now I want you to look at the graph of x square. Like the graph will look like this way. Then I need to graph better. Then let's take a derivative. We have a two x. What was the rule? The power comes from and then lower one power. So I got my derivative function as 2x. I want to keep writing this. So yeah, we saw that chapter 1, chapter 2. Now you connect with variable change with sending limit becomes our derivative. Then what does this mean? I can find everywhere what the slope is. So plug in here. When you plug in, of course you can guess it. But this one, when I plug in 0, my slope is a 0. When I plug in here, it looks like 1, but actually the slope was a 2. If I plug in 2, 2 times 2, so the slope at here is 4. If you plug in negative 1, that's going to be negative 2 as my slope. This is, if I plug in negative 2, now that gives me negative 4 as my slope. That means you found the function. So if you plug in, that will give me each time what the slope is. So what is the slope at 100? If you plug in 100 here, what will be your slope? It is going to be 200. Why? Because I plug in here. That's a function it will show me. Then, now we should be able to find the equation. I want to pick actually x is equal to 2. What does that mean? x is equal to 2. I want to find what this tangent line is. What is this tangent line? So I found at 2 slope is 4. Then by plugging, it's going to pass through 2 comma 4. So what is the equation, tangent equation at 2? That's going to be y minus 4 equals, slope is going to be 4 parentheses x minus 2. That's going to be 4x minus a plus 4 is minus 4. Is that correct? Really? I don't like that. Okay, 4x. I feel a little weird. But I think that's the actually equation at 2 comma 4. 2 comma 4. Y is equal to 4x minus 4. Then, what will be second derivative? I already got 2x. So if I take the derivative of it one more time, then that goes to x to the zeroth power, which is 2. So my second derivative will be 2. If I graph it, my graph is going to look like this one. That means, am I accelerating? Yes. Am I going forward? Yes. Then look at here also. When does your graph is increasing? When your concavity will be always up here. So concavity will be always up there. So now I want you to continue in class activities and try to check the answer one more time. So let's compare the answer of in class activity to so rate of change. You can actually look at the previous one also plug in carefully. That's what I got and then if I take a derivative x to the negative 1, I got negative 1 over x squared. Then second derivative, just uh, make sure that you take a negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, x to the 1 power low. So that's what I got as a second derivative. So let's try to understand what does the meaning in here. Tangent equation as x is 2, that means x is 2 is right here. I want to find this equation. So in order to find the slope, I have an equation here. So I plug in x as a 2, which gives me negative 1 over 4. And then 
point is going to pass through 2 and 1 half. So point slope form shows me that after simplify, I have this equation, negative 1 fourth x plus 1. And what do we call as this one? Tangent line. Don't forget, we call it a tangent line. So this is a tangent line. I have a question. Um, what does your first derivative is going to look like? It's a increasing or decreasing? Decreasing, this is decreasing. So your graph will be both below the x-axis, right? Both will be below the x-axis. I want to check and then do it. And now, what will second derivative is going to look like? Look at this one. My concave down, that means your second derivative will be below the x-axis. This is concave up. Your second derivative will be above the x-axis. What does that mean? Let's graph. Oh, let's graph your second derivative. We graph this one. 2 over x cube. 2 over x cube. How does this look like? x cube look like it x 1 over x so briefly i'm gonna graph this way briefly i'm gonna graph oh no not this side it should be this side x to the cube so this side so now look at here your graph of a second derivative is above the x axis means this your concavity is up if your second derivative blue color graph is below the x-axis, then your original graph is actually concave down. So connect that. Okay, that's it. Okay, so let's continue our main dish. Main dish will summarize all the first derivative, second derivative, which I've been mentioning last two hours of the previous section. So first, let's graph what's happening in here. That's x squared graph. This is negative x squared graph, and this is x cubed, and then this is negative x cubed. Now, that's my original function. Let's talk about my first derivative graph. How is it going to look like? How is it going to look like? So, I'm going to have my x-axis. And then, as you see, the point that it makes zero as a slope is gonna go as a slope zero. I see that here also slope zero is gonna be slope zero. Now my graph is a decreasing, so that means on first derivative it has to be below the x-axis. And then it's increasing above the x-axis. Put it linear because that's quadratic, it will be linear looking. I want to continue this one now. It's increasing above the x-axis, decreasing below the x-axis. So now I'm going to remove this one quickly. I want to see that if you can go backwards. This is a very tricky part. So look at here. I have this one as a first derivative. Now, when it's a positive means it's increasing, negative means decreasing. So here says my graph is decreasing, here says increasing. You only have one case, decreasing, increasing. That's your graph look like, right? Related to this one, this means my graph is increasing, and then my graph is decreasing. So that's the original graph you can have. Can you do this one with looking at the graph? Look at here, look at here. So I want you to fill in up. But I will do second derivative and then you do this one by your own. So I want to talk about next one. Oh, sorry, I have to go back. When you have your first derivative function from decreasing to increasing, minus to plus, what happened in my graph? This will give me local, maximum, minimum, minimum value. This is very important. Now relate this one. That means my original graph is increasing and then decreasing. Then what's happening? This will be local maximum. So I want you to remember that when you have a first derivative, if it crosses the x-axis, it's a very important meaning in here. 
And then we'll see what our other next two are. So now let's find second derivative. So now everything is increasing. So my second derivative is a positive, right? Everywhere is decreasing. So my second derivative will be negative. What does this mean? If my second derivative positive means what? Concavity is up. And if it's, uh, your second derivative is below the x-axis, then your original function has to be below the x-axis. So with only using this information, you can actually find original functions. Sometimes we have to do that. People who are working for the weathers, because they only know the how fast it's moving, right? Which is this function, and they have to go back to this function sometimes. So now I want to pause it, and then I want to try in class the activities and compare the graph with me. Can be a little bit tricky, but understand the meaning, okay? Okay, let's compare your in class the activities, and my graph is gonna look like this way. I want you to check with yours and mine. Does it make sense to you? Everything is increasing, so my graph has to be above the x-axis. But at that moment, when concavity changes, you're gonna hit the zero, and then you're gonna continue. Same idea in here. Now, you know that that's the x cubed kind of function, so if you take a derivative, also algebraically, I know that it's gonna be x squared. Then if I take a second derivative, which means a derivative of first derivative, that will show me that decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing, and then this is going to be my second derivative function graph and then I want to compare here. Okay, now let me see what you need to know in this part. First of all, you have a second derivative with very steady function. What does that mean? I think you're gonna have a local minimum somewhere. Why? This means concavity up, right? This means concavity up. So your graph is going to be concave up, that means you're going to have local minimum no matter what. Look, at if your second derivative is steady like this, what does that mean? Concave down. So you have to have local maximum no matter what. But now look at this one. It's not like flat like this one. But what does this mean? Concave down, concave up. Concave down, concave up. Do you see that? Relate it here, concave up, concave down, concave up, concave down. Okay, so I hope that you understand second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, then your original function is concave up. And then if it's a down, then it's going to be concave down. Now let's go back to first derivative function. If your first derivative but derivative function is a positive, that means your original function is increasing. So it's increasing, increasing, that means it's decreasing. So your first derivative function is negative, then we say your original function is decreasing. We call this one as first derivative function test. This one we call the second derivative test. And why? In if you know this one, you can guess the your original function. Okay. So that was the 2.5 now second derivative function. And now let's play together. Okay, we are on main dish number two. Now you said two appetite, or two main dish and two dessert, right? A lot to talk about, but I hope that you're taking delicious dishes here and then keep making yours. So I want you to estimate first and second derivative function. So I will try to draw first derivative and then I also try to draw second derivative and then I want to compare with next two with me. So easiest one is, now I'm gonna do roughly. Before I measure all the slope, now we have practiced a lot. So these are the zero, zero, and zero. And as you see, my graph is decreasing, that means below the x-axis, above the x-axis, below the x-axis, and this. Young, how did you get that? Well, I just looked at it here. 
decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. So decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. So I graph first derivative function. Now let's see if you can do second derivative function. Class, probably sometimes can be a little bit more flatter than that one too. But for me, I kind of try to guess this one quickly mentally. That's what I did in my brain. It's probably a little bit less than here. Yeah, because it looks like a less than two, right? So you could actually put it accurate like this. That would be good. But if you have a rough shape, still I'm happy. And now let's take a derivative of my first derivative function. Let me indicate that. So second derivative function will be, have to find the zeros. And here's zeros. So it's going to pass through here and pass through here. Then if I connect, it's going to look like this way. So that's my second derivative function related to it. Second derivative function of both the x axis means concave up. Do you see concave up of a red color function? Concave up to here. Now my function is below x axis, that means concave down. Here to here is concave down. And then next one above the x axis, concave up. So you can actually guess your original graph by looking at your second derivative graph. Okay, so I want to make it these two as your in-class activities. I want to draw the first derivative carefully and then draw second derivative carefully, okay? Okay, if I put everything at once, it's going to be a little bit confusing. So I will just put my first derivative graph. I kind of guess as like about two and one. So kind of look at that. This one I guess is about five. That's why it dropped all the way down. So orange color is my first derivative. Then now I'm going to draw a second derivative. Let's find the zeros first. So zeros are here and zeros are here. And then as you see, my orange graph is decreasing. That means below the x-axis, increasing above the x-axis, decreasing below the x-axis. Do you see that? So now this is the only part that is increasing. That if you lined up, that's part that going to be above the x-axis. Okay, last one. This one also have to be careful. X to the fifth, x to the fourth. So my graph, I expect the x to the third. And those are the zeros I'm going to put. And then now look at here, it's a decreasing means below the x-axis. Increasing means above the x-axis. Decreasing means below the x-axis. Of course, your graph can be a little bit less bigger in that gap than mine. But if I see that as an x cube shape, I'll be happy. So that's how you graph first and second derivative graph and then keep relate that first derivative shows what? Speed is increasing or decreasing. Second derivative shows what? Concavity is going to be up or down. So remember that. And we have a dessert left, almost there. Okay class, let's do dessert part of the 2.5. We are almost there. Now I want to give you the one example of a physics question using the calculus related to position and then particle moving the position in here. So the position of a particle is given by equation where t is measured in seconds as your time as x value and then y will be in meters as a position. So let's see, can I actually graph this one can I graph this one if I factor do you see that I'm going to put t squared minus 6 t plus 9 which is a t times this t minus 3 squared so I can graph it will pass here to here so down up down no it's gonna touch here right so it touches and down so I graph mine this way. Now here's a find the velocity. So what does that mean? Velocity means uh, miles per hour. It's a time distance over 
time. So if you see distance over time as my rate, what are they asking? Hidden meaning is find the first derivative. So let's find the first derivative from here that will give me 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. I think I can factor it. So pull up by 3, I have a t squared minus 4t plus 3. That makes a t minus 3, t plus 3, t minus 3, t minus 1. So let's graph our second derivative function passing through 1 and 3. I'm going to graph that. But do you guys remember, we can actually find this point. How? I have this function. If I take a derivative, what does that become? This value is going to be 0. So I want to see that what exactly the value will be. So that means 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. Let's take a derivative which will be second derivative that is 6t minus 12. If I pull up by 6, t minus 2. Oh, when does it become 0? When t is 2, it becomes 0. That means I know that this one has to be at 2. Then, you know, I want to find that is really nice what the exact value is. So we can plug in here. Since I know that at 2 is going to be vertex, so 3 times 2 minus 3, 2 minus 1, that will give me 3 comma negative 3. So it's going to actually pass 2 comma minus 3. So that's the point actually it's going to pass through. Now I want you to actually see that what's happening in here. What's happening in here? As you see, we talked about the other day. If you look at my first derivative graph, here says my graph is increasing. As soon as it reaches 1, it has to be decreased. Now look at my function. I want to make my graph a little bit better. Here up to here, I know that it's increasing on original and then decreasing here. That, do you see that? Increasing function original, decreasing function original. Then what happened at 1? It has to be vertex. It has to be the peak because increasing, decreasing has to give me maximum value. So that will give me local maximum value when? When x value is 1. Then if I want to find my graph better, where should I plug in that 1? Original or first derivative? You need to plug in original. So let's plug in 1 here. 1 times 1 minus 3 is 2, 2 squared. So it passes through 1 comma 4. That is the peak of the x cube function. So if I fix this one, now using first derivative, I can draw my function looks this way. That's an accurate function, exactly. Then I want you to talk about red color function in this part again. Now, can you read this? It means my original function increasing or decreasing? Below the x-axis, so it's decreasing. This is above the x-axis, so my original function increasing. Then what happened at 3? It has to be local minima. Local minima. How do I find that value exactly? Plug in. This case, I know that my graph gives me 0, so this case is a you will see the answer is a 0, but just in case, I can plug back. If I plug in 3, do you say 3 minus 3? It means 0. So I found those are two local max and minimum point. One is 1, 4, other one is going to be 3, 0. And we are going to find those values on the next chapter. So keep studying. So that's a powerful main, uh, part of the calculus. Now let's solve what is the velocity at 2? Velocity means the first derivative, so all I need to do is plug in. So if I plug in 2, what do you get as your speed? If I plug in 2, I gonna get, I can just use this function, right? Of course, you can plug in here too. So if I plug in 2, 3 times 2 minus 3, and then 2 minus 1, 
so I get negative 3. That means if I plug in 2, I get negative 3. Oh, I actually got it earlier, right? And then, what if I plug in 4? If I plug in 4, same idea. It's going to be 3 times. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So, I get 9. I get 9. That means when I have a 4, this value is going to pass 9. Also, what is the slope at 4 here? That's going to be 9. That means this is increasing a lot faster. Because they say slope is 9 at 4. So at 4, I want to make 9. Slope is 9. So look at. If the slope is 9, this is a 5, right? So it has to be even sharper. Like that. So I found the point of this one and this one. Then when is the particle at rest? What does that mean? Particle at rest. That means am I talking about position, speed, or acceleration? Am I talking about first derivative, second derivative? Particle is rest means speed is zero. So I'm going to use first derivative is going to be this one. We already factor. When is it going to be rest? That means when does your speed is zero? When t is three seconds and then one second. It's going to be rest. What does that mean? Look at my orange color graph. It's so moving forward, 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 and then speed is zero. And here, going negative slope means what? Going backwards, and then stop, and then going forward again. So, when does your particle stop for the moment? At three seconds, one second. One second and three seconds. And when is the particle moving forward? What does that mean? Moving forward, am I talking about speed or acceleration? I'm moving forward, that means it's a speed, that's a velocity, so it's related to first derivative again. Moving forward means your first derivative is a positive. So look at your red color graph and where is moving forward? That means I see that above the x-axis, the graph is shown as, I will use red color for first derivative. So your particle has to be greater than zero. Red color graph shows that above the x is negative infinity to one and then 3 to infinity, and then if I change the question, when does your particle moving backwards? That means your first derivative has to be below 0. So we look at here, and then do you see my function 1 through 3 is below 0. Now, that's related to orange color. My function is increasing from infinity to 1, negative infinity to 1, and then what happened? 1, 2, 3 decreasing and then 3 to rest increasing again so I wanted to see the relationship now I want to draw the diagram of representing the motion of the particle so where does the particle started it started here x is a time as a second y is a meter as a move on um, position how much it moved so first my particle stayed at zero and first one second Speed is a positive, moving forward for one second. How long? How much did they move? Move four meters. Then, what happened after that? My slope is a negative, going backwards. Up to where? Do you see that at three seconds, where was your position? Position back to zero. You're back to home. So you left, you forgot, you're back to home. So, it took one second to left, and then when you come back, how long did it take? Two seconds to travel four meters. Okay, you came back four meters, back to house again. And then what happened after you came back? You took off again. Now, of course, you have to go straight. I'm just avoiding the letter. So, you're going forward. So, forward, backwards, forward. Then, that is the motion, how the um, particle moved from forward, backward, and then forward. And let's continue. F. F is asking what is the total distance? Oh, so let's total distance up to first five seconds. 
total distance up to first five seconds. Then I wanna see what F5 are they asking this? Yes or no? So I'm going to plug in five. If I plug in five, five times five minus three is two squares of four, so I get twenty. I get five comma twenty. Then when five seconds later your particle was positioned at 20 meters away. So it's one second, two second, and then after one, two, three, four second, five second, two seconds, how much do they travel from here to rest? Because you came back here to rest, you travel 20 meters. How do I know that? I know that that distance is 20. Then, what is the total distance? Travel. It's going to be 20 or 28. What do you think? Total distance is 28. Then, what is 20? We call as net displacement. Like, Although you travel 28 meters for 5 seconds, but if you, somebody asks, oh, how far is that place? You're going to say 20 meters or far, right? But your car, if you are driving, your car is going to record it mildly as 28 meters. But if you talk about the distance from here to here, just a, what is the shortest way? That's a net displacement. So don't forget these two are different and they are different concept and it will keep coming back on physics as well. So now G, let's find the acceleration time at after four seconds. So there is a G. If you look at, I already did second derivative, take the derivative and then I got this function. So I want to see acceleration at 4, then I need to plug in 4. So let's plug in 4. 4 times 6, 24 minus 12 gives me 12 meter per second, second square. What does that mean? The acceleration at 4 is 12. That means you are pressing down 12 meter per second. Okay, and keep for you pressing down, 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 down until you get faster, faster, faster. So in this moment, you are not just pressing, you are pressing down with the acceleration of 12 meters per second square. Then H, graph the position velocity acceleration. So now I have a position and then my velocity. So let's graph this one, 60 minus 12, or you can see that y-intercept at 2, x-intercept x 2, y-intercept at 12, slope 6, if I connect, that's how it's going to look like. So graph that one, all those three. So that's a second derivative, and then first derivative, uh, original, and then second derivative, first derivative, uh, original, and then First derivative, the red color. And when is the particle speed up? They are asking particle speed up. What does that mean? Speed up. That means speed or acceleration. I already have speed, but speeding up, that means accelerating, right? Think about the word speeding up, speeding down. Are they both going forward? Yes. But one of them is going from here, pew, and then speeding down, going slower by the time. So when it's speeding up, that means your second derivative, when it's positive. So I want to see that when my second derivative positive from 2 to infinity. So I see 2 to infinity, my second derivative is positive, which means acceleration. You are accelerating. Then when are you decelerating? 2 to before you're decelerating. Think about here, you took up, to get there, you're gonna slow it down, right? And then you're going backwards, and then get there, you're slowing down, and then from here, you have to kind of accelerate. 
the meaning is a little bit hard because it happens your acceleration here but still you have to this part you have to actually study a little bit more about physics to understand but I want you to at least understand positive part so um, when you see here it's going to be decelerating and the accelerating here and what does also your function shows don't forget what does our first derivative shows first derivative shows that when graph is increasing or decreasing also as I mentioned first graph first derivative graph shows maximum and then minimum value of a local then what does the second derivative show second derivative shows me concavity and in speed it's going to be in distance question it's going to be acceleration and this is speed or velocity first derivative is a speed so then how can we say about concavity below the x-axis i just remember whatever below x-axis concave down so up to two concave down so now look at here you see that your original graph concave down and then from here to here concave up here to here concave up mm -hmm. so i want you to relay first derivative test and second derivative test and what they give me as information so i hope that that was a really good review for you and then after this one, there's a last one in class activities. I want you to take a derivative quickly and compare with. Okay, so let's look at in class activities and did you get to find your derivative? I'm gonna do it very fast. So this one I got derivative as 4x cubed, this one negative 4x to the negative 5 because you have to subtract one. I don't like you to write your answer this way. I want to write it as positive exponent because you have to practice for next semester next one if i take a derivative 3 over 2 is going to come from and then lower 1 power so 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 and then help x to the negative 1 over 2 bring your power to the front and then lower 1 which is going to be negative 3 over 2 and i don't like you writing answer this way so rewrite it 1 over 2 x to the 3 over 2 or some students like to use this way square root of x cubed that's fine we go 2 x square root of x over 1 these all three are the same answers and i will take as answer okay so this one i'm not going to take the answer this one i'm not going to accept as answer but when you practice your homework probably they will use that but i want you to go further for next semester or end of the semester you have to go backwards Okay, did you listen? You have to go backwards. So, careful. Okay, good job. This is it.